Okay, so today we're going to take a look at infinite series, and to get you thinking about this idea of infinities, more of this to common calculus, but for now, um, I'm going to give you this example, and it would be nice, right? What a great way to learn math if I could give away gold bricks. But uh, unfortunately, I don't have a gold brick. I think the cost so probably we'll just, around 40... We'll just have to pretend we do. I'll just have to pretend, but it'd be around, I don't know, I think that's about $40,000 or $50,000 worth of gold there, so it'd be a pretty sweet prize. But um, anyway... Let's say that I'm going to give half of its weight away every week to the top Math 12 student. So I'm going to chop what I've got in half, hand it up over to the student. So let's figure out what would the series look like if we were to do a, um, you know, represent that pattern. Okay, so what would the first term be? Um, actually, it'd be a half, right? The first thing I give away, how much has been given away is um, a half. So the series would look like this. A half has been given away. Then the next week, it would be a quarter, right? Because I've got a half the bar now. Cut that in half, I have a quarter. Okay, then I'd have an eighth. And maybe we'll go one more. So a sixteenth's not bad. That's still like $3,000 worth of gold or $2,000 worth of gold. But eventually, it's going to become like nobody cares anymore, right? But still, the first like month would be awesome. So, okay, a couple questions for you. Okay, do I ever run out of gold? Good, there's no physics people here. In the last block, everyone was like, well, yeah, of course, because eventually you'll split the uh, atom and, uh, uh. and it won't be gold anymore. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> but, okay, ignoring the fact that, uh, okay, physically, yes, there is a limit physically. Um, in our world in math, we would think of this like, we won't run out. We can keep doing the halves. I think the example, uh, this is similar to an example, um, the first, one of the first times that uh, they thought of infinity, somebody gave an example. I'm pretty sure it was a Greek, uh, a Greek guy said uh, to get to his destination, if he went half the distance and then half the distance and then half the distance and half, would he ever get to his dis destination? So it's kind of a similar idea. But for our purposes, I know we'd split an atom eventually, but we're going to say no. We're in math class, not in physics, right? So don't argue with Mr. Tennant. Mr. Tennant would be right if he were to take this argument up with him. Okay, if I keep handing out half the remaining gold forever, how much will I end up giving away? So you come visit me with your grandkids. I've got a, I got a chain and a, I got a, a crutch and a beard that comes down to my belly. And you know, all my hair fell out. My, I got gray hair. And I'm still handing out half of this bar of gold, right? And it keeps going on and on forever. How much will I have eventually given away? Yeah, both of those answers sound good to me. So 0.999999, because, you know, eventually I'm going to have such little left that it's going to be like I had one, right? I've given away one gold brick. So that's what we would expect is by the end of this, I would have given away one gold, you know, kilogram of gold brick. Okay. So let me show you here what the algebra, because the algebra is actually nicer. It seems weird that we'd be working with something complicated like infinity and the algebra ends up being nicer. Um, the last point is one that's kind of interesting because if I hand out gold forever, some people find it strange that even though I keep adding to the pile, that that pile never keep, you know, doesn't get infinitely large. I can keep adding some quantity into that pile, but it never actually grows bigger than a kilo. So how is it that I always add and add and add? I keep scooping more gold into the pile, but I never actually run yeah, out. The amount you scoop into it each time halves each right, time. Right, because it's getting smaller, yeah. So anyways, calculus, that's an idea that we will revisit. But for now, um, last day we talked about this. We said, if this is the sum, okay, if it's infinite, it just keeps going. There is no end to the series. Okay. The series times the common ratio, um, I'm going to line them up again, would look like this. Okay. And the reason the math gets nicer is they go on forever. So, like last day we said, oh, there's a, r, n, uh, minus 1. And, well, here there's an a, r, n, minus 1. Is that an f or a plus sign? Well, I'll fix it then. I know. Oops. Okay, a, there. How's that? Uh, no, that other one, plus sign. Oh, they're plus signs. That's a plus sign there. Ah. Sorry. Okay, um... So no matter how far I get, these terms all line up. Yes, this sequence, this series here is always one term ahead. That is correct. 
But on the way to infinity, it does not matter. It's like if I was to say, great news, DJ, you just won an infinite amount of money. Connor, you just won an infinite plus one amount of money. Who's happier? Uh, really? Uh, it, think, well, maybe. Wait, maybe it's just in those like... Maybe it's just like those corny love movies where they're like, oh, I love you, infinity plus one. But in the math world, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't make any difference. <laughs> no, I don't actually. But I do, I, do have an, I do have an infinity on my wedding band, though. But I don't actually say that. So. Yes, Anthony. I think the person who got infinity would be happier because the guy who got infinity plus one would be infinity plus one. How does that work? Well, and think of all the extra taxes that Connor has to pay on that dollar. Yeah. <laughs> okay, anyways, but the point is, on the way to infinity, you don't care, right? It's kind of like, you know, to Bill Gates, you know, a dollar is, who cares, right? I mean, the time it takes, if you asked him for a dollar and the time it took for him to give you the dollar, you'd be like, that was, like, I wasted $10,000 of your time asking you for one dollar, right? It's so insignificant. So, eventually, all these terms just cancel out, right? Ab when we subtract them like we did last day, there's always a, a match for every term that you have. So when we subtract like last day, all I'm left with is the first term. That's the only thing that remains. Everything else has a partner that gets subtracted. Okay. So that means the formula ends up being a lot simpler because I get S times 1 minus R equals A. So the sum is just A over 1 minus R. We don't need to know the number of terms because it's infinite. So that's where the formula comes from, and good news, it is included on the formula sheet. Yay. That's the last one in sequences and series, last formula that, that we'll use. So we have to actually, the, this is a simpler formula, yeah? This is simpler than the other ones? Okay. The only trick to this formula is we have to think a bit first before we use it. So let's look at this uh, formula that we used last day. And this is what we got to understand, because this is the only trick they can throw at you for using the formula. Tell me about this number r, if I raise it, if I pick a small number. So it's easiest if you think about it with an example. Like let's say r equals 0.5, and I raise it to a very large number like 10,000. So 0.5 to the 10,000, what do you think that's going to kind of look like? Really small. What about 0.5 to the million? Even smaller, 0.5 to the trillion. Okay, so when we do an infinite amount of terms, what do you think happens to this part right here? What's really, 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 really small? Zero, right? Eventually, as we go off to an infinite number, r to the n would become zero. Okay? So, if you think about it that way, this term here that we had from yesterday, that means this piece disappears. So if that's gone we end up with that formula that we just saw, right? This formula here now lines up to the one from last day, okay? But what can go wrong, and um, I was brought to my attention that I actually have this backwards, so that's supposed to be r, um, you could say greater than or equal to one, or r less than or equal to negative one. Okay. Yes, Anthony? Is this recording? We are recording, yes. Cool. So there is one problem, however. Okay, let's think about it now. Same idea. We're going to look back at this formula and figure out where they could try to trick us, where there could be a problem. Let's say now I'm in this case here. I'm no longer a small value between negative 1 and 1. Let's say I'm a value like r equals to 2. Okay? So what's happening now is I'm doubling every time. If I went out to an infinite amount, okay, would you be able to tell me what, like, how much stuff I have? How come? You're shaking your heads and you're right, you can't. Why do you think that is? Because we're not Chuck Norris. I don't even think Chuck Norris could count this. It doesn't round off. Sorry? It doesn't round off. Well, there is, yeah, it doesn't round off. It doesn't, it just keeps growing. It just becomes a bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger number, right? So because we can't actually figure out what number this is, I mean, you might say, oh, Mr. Joyce, I figured it out. It's 10,975,000 and blah, blah, blah. 
And I say, ah, but there's one more term after that. And then you go, okay, okay, I got it, I got it. And then you do it again. And I say, no, but there's still one more term. And it keeps getting bigger and it's bigger and it's bigger. And we can never actually agree on what the answer is. So when this happens, r to the n itself becomes an infinite number, right? 2 to the thousand, that's a big number. 2 to the million gets even bigger. 2 to the trillion, and we're really starting to talk about huge numbers. So this means there's no finite sum. Okay. So that's the only thing that you have to do before you go and use that formula, is you've got to ask yourself, will there actually be a value that's going to work out? Is it this case here, where there will be a finite sum? Or will it just be so huge that I can't find it? Once you answer that question, you can use the formula. Okay. So let's verify that this formula works on the gold brick. Okay. So the gold brick, the, the, uh, this is what we had for a series. The sum would be the first term divided by 1 minus the common ratio. And look at that. If I go all the way up to infinity, I end up with my one kilogram gold brick again. So that does match up with our, our uh, scenario, right? That the brick would be completely gone, one kilogram. So now what I want you to think about here is here's three uh, infinite geometric series, OK? Decide, do they have a finite sum? And if they do, calculate it. So I know you're still calculating there. That's OK. Can somebody tell me a C, uh, one of these series, A, B, or C, that has a finite sum? Sure, Danny. A and C. You are correct. This has a finite sum. This has a finite sum. What about B? No, no finite sum there. So for this one, the common ratio is negative 2. It's going to just keep getting larger and larger and larger. So this one has no finite sum. We're done. Here's why you have to know that you have to apply this rule. If you were in autopilot and you said, oh, infinite series, ah, there's a formula. Let's throw it into the formula. The formula won't complain. The formula is not very smart. The formula would still work, but it's going to tell you 5 thirds is the answer. Now, in this case, you may say, well, that's obviously wrong, so it wouldn't happen to me. But the questions aren't always so obvious that are picked for provincial exams, right? So just ask yourself that question first. Because if you go into autopilot, it's not like you divide by zero, and then you say, oh, right, I remember. It doesn't work out. It still works. Okay. So the first one does work as well. The sum is going to be the first term divided by 1 minus the common ratio. So 1 over 4 thirds. So I think 3 quarters. Nope, 2 thirds. <coughs> this is what happens when I try and get fancy without a calculator. Let's see here. 2 thirds. <coughs> and that makes this 3 halves. That's better. Okay. So. Um, and part C, did anybody get a finite sum for part C yet? Let's see here. Adriel, can you explain to me the pieces I need to know for part C? Yeah, so R is negative one third and plug it into the formula. Sure, so there's one more thing you need to tell me before I can put it in the formula. Yeah, there we go. So this will be 6 over 4 thirds. So that should be, um, let's see here, 18 over 4, which is 9 halves. 